All right, I want to preface this video by saying that the reason that I even chose this model is because I could tell that the user was putting in their time and effort into it. And that's the main thing that I'm looking for. You know, I'm not looking for people that are just experimenting for five minutes and they're like, hey, how do you deal with this? I mean, I do care about those things as well. But I mean, when it comes to reviewing files, I definitely care about people who are putting in the effort and have definitely attempted to learn from the process because only by failing repeatedly and struggling and fighting through it and fighting through the things that you struggle with, I feel you can really get to that level that people attain for. So, you know, I definitely don't intend any sort of insults or any of that. Um, but without further ado, let's uh, jump into it. So there was a particular user on Facebook who was modeling a spherical drone. And so I asked him to send me the file. Um, I'm just gonna jump into it like as if I was uh, talking to a friend or something. All right, bro, look, you sent me a file. You didn't even pack the reference image. What's up with that? I mean, I guess you gave it to me in the folder, so that's cool. So this is the reference image, which I spent a lot of time looking at. I mean, you know, when it comes to reference image choices, these really sketchy ones are, the, I always love these because you can really just figure it out and just extrapolate. And there really is no right or wrong unless it doesn't look like the concept. But in this case, I could tell that you took a few artistic liberties. Um, you know, first thing I always do when I look at people's files, look at their uh, outliner. I see that you have a base file here. Uh, I was kind of curious in what you're shrink wrapping because that was um, part of our original discussion was, um, you know, shrink wrapping and using subdivision and bevel and all these crazy mods in a crazy order. I was like, I have never once shown that in a video ever. And that's because I, I'm personally obsessed with control. I'm not saying my, my way of modeling is the right way by any means because anytime you start talking about topology you will find an even bigger topology expert to crush you and make you look like a stupid bitch so i never want to get boisterous about topology like i'm always watching topology videos to try to have understandings more of sub d and how it works and poly flows and stuff like that so i'm only talking from a point of experience definitely uh not a point of authority i don't want to be the authority on sub d modeling or anything like that but uh, without further ado, continuing on. So, you know, we look at this shape and I'm just gonna take in a local real quick. And the topology of this is uh, kind of nuts. Like it's, it's a little skewed, right? Like if we go in edit mode and we were to uh, kind of annotate the flow, it's something kind of like this, like, um, which is a, an odd direction to go for being a plate, right? Like um, if we were to change the color into the flow, I have no idea how to use annotation. Sorry, I, I never have used this before this very moment, but we will find out together, won't we? So we'll make a new annotation and this one will be blue da -dee -da -dee -da. And congratulations, I'm now an annotation master. I'll print out my certificate, but I, I love um, trying to figure things out without reading anything just as a test, but I mean, while the flow that I'm drawing in red is kind of, um, I guess, linear, that would definitely be a better flow direction to have. But because of, you know, all this uh, quote unquote tension that you have, it's resulting in you creating additional geometry. It doesn't need to exist. So, you know, the first thing I always look for, strangely for me, I mean, you know, these are just um, modeling tips for me, but I always look for simplicity with sub D because it's the easiest way to control things. And here's where you get rid of annotations in case you never knew. But, you know, sub D is all about having control and being able to um, have every single connection and closeness of an edge indicate some sort of um, surface behavior. And, you know, sub D has way different rules than bevel. So when you mix the two of them together, it's really a, a bit of a shake. So. You know, just hypothetically, I'm just going to reopen the file anyways, but let's say I wanted to redo this area. This would probably flow better. I mean, that's just my first attempt. Of course, I would tweak every point and clean it up and fix everything going around this. But something like that compared to, you know, what we just were looking at is definitely going to at least flow better visually. And... I mean, whenever people take their time focusing on topology, I always notice that the people whining about topology the most always has topology that's um, what I would consider a little problematic. 
So, you know, while you, you could scrutinize me for always using bullions, um, when it comes to the heavy duty work, I give it the best sacrifices. Um, it's terrible to say, but it's like my motto when it comes to modeling. So let's look at the rest of this shape. And the rest of the shape was kind of hard to find. I was in local, then I had to unhide, and then we can hide the shrink wrap. And we look at this and it's actually a really good model, but we see that you lost control in so many areas also, that shouldn't be sharpened. I'll help you out there. Um, but everything else is, you know, th these lumps are just indications of loss of control with sub D. In fact, you can look at it on the outside and just tell that, you know, there's a loss of control that happened. Whenever you decide to simplify these two points to one on a curved turn area, you know, that created a pole situation that has created a lump. And you create another one here where you attempted diamond quad in a curved area. And these are just problematic. Even if we took this and slid it, and why is someone always messaging me? All right, so now I'm able to uh, get back to work. Sometimes I get interrupted by messages. I hate it when I'm cut off in the middle of a sentence by a barrage of messages that happen so frequently, it drives me insane. Anyway, so we were talking about this area and we we're saying that, you know, even shifting this into a diamond quad would barely alleviate it. In fact, let's um, undo that and let it slide back. So this is what we're looking at, which kind of actually looks the same. So sliding it should actually only just relieve the topology a little bit. And then this area, like everywhere where it begins to skew is going to be an area that's getting out of control. And you know, still getting dinged on my watch. There is no relenting from the barrage of messages, which is why I'm always telling people to not message me, by the way, just in case anyone ever wondered. You know, if I was lazy with this thing, I mean, right now I'm just goofing off with it before I propose a, a better solution. I, you know, I just wanted to start off the video just kind of messing with things and I'm still getting messaged. Please stop messaging me. All right, so for the purposes of this video, I gotta just take off this cursed watch, all right? Just take off the watch. The watch is cursed, fuck. You know, I was sitting on the couch earlier and I wasn't wearing it, and I was like, man, it's so quiet. The world is so quiet, it's just insane. It's insane. This watch is a curse, I'm telling you. Anyway, so back to where I was. So we were talking about hacking our way through this thing. So uh, just to kind of review this mesh, right, this guy, uh, use, you know, keeping them anonymous, but, you know, not for any reason in particular, but, you know, he started off with a solidify, then a bevel, then a subdivision. Now, let's actually re-examine that order. Let's say that the subdivision was first, then it would subdivide the shape, which would get you this, which is not the most optimal result. The other thing is that he chose to inset everything, and while that could seem like a good choice it has created a lot of areas that we're going to have to tighten up which means we're going to have to grab them and mark them in order to sharpen them but this is actually one of my favorite aspects of subdivision modeling which i refer to as um you know just hard creasing but whenever i apply it it's a process i refer to as rebasing where we um, just apply a level of sub d but we um harden the areas that we want to keep in order to ensure that sub D doesn't turn all our angles into arcs because having an angle such as this be turned into an arc is probably the reason that he had it at the very end and was just using subdivision as a um, kind of final smoothing system, which is a way to work, of course, but we, we will need to tighten this up for the purposes of this demo. In fact, for this one, because I'm not, because of this, um, I was about to say triangle, I guess there is a triangle, but it's a such a strange formation of geometry, I guess, to put it lightly. I mean, even though every time I crease, you see me adding additional edges. I mean, even right here, look, we're gonna have to make a hard choice. Let's come out of local, let's look at this. What are we trimming? Something has to die, that one can go. So now this single edge is holding down the whole west coast. So we can just select this, control click all the way to the end. Let's go back in local, talk about this. We'll just select this and dissolve it. 
we can select this one and just slide it maybe slide all this stuff i mean i'm kind of ocd with geometry i cannot stop sliding when blender made gg a thing i was like oh my god this is the greatest hotkey i have ever seen in my entire life there is no better hotkey than gg i mean i don't know there's a lot of good hotkeys in blender which makes me sad when people are like i'm not into hotkeys it's, yeah i understand you know some people don't have hands some of you guys might have tentacles shout out to the tentacle gang the only people able to use hotkeys faster than me so as we're sliding and relaxing things we could see that you know the mesh is looking a little wonky but mainly i wanted to give this area one control point to sharpen so here we are with and, and don't even worry about the hard uh smoothing that's happening that's just a byproduct of this experiment we can just dissolve that one simplifying its interpolation um when i approach sub d i look at it like um, geometry is being calculated between this and this and then this and this and then all of this and you know uh, subdivision is like it turns this into four and then turns it into eight and tries to smooth it in between you know cat mark he was a he was a smart guy this is why he had to lock down the industry for 50 years sorry just little fun facts about the head of Pixar so we'll just keep sliding geometry around but having just one control point and even having this the way it is, you know, me personally, I would actually offset it, which means we'll put the triangle here instead of having it sit right there next to the perimeter. And then we can just deal with that in our own time. But a lot of my modeling is me kind of uh, experimenting with geometry and combinations just to see if I'm able to get a more optimal combination for a geometric area. Because I mean, between selecting two points, pressing J to lightning bolt, and then selecting four and pressing F. It's almost like Tetris. And if anyone knows me, I am pretty nuts about Tetris. Um, my girlfriend does imitations of me talking about Tetris, like a dork. But continuing on, even this area, you know, that's just sharp marking. It'll just remind me like a Nickelback song. And let's say we wanted to actually clean up this area and, and be smart with this because that's the reason that he simplified this. But let's actually look at this. Let's look at this in terms of sub D. Do we need two edges in order to specify this arc? I mean, sub D's job is literally to make things into arcs against your will, might I add. So we'll just play off of that. In fact, we have this entire edge flow that possibly doesn't need to exist. And because that doesn't need to exist, this doesn't need to exist. And already we're, we're beginning to get a flow going that's uh, a little bit more controllable. And I'm not even looking at the image. I'm still playing off of your um, offshoot. You know, I'm a, I'm a fan of just going off the reservation with a concept, you know, just getting random. Randomness is how you find yourself. All right, so we'll select this, control click to here, and just slide this over. You know, I just can't take seeing uh, heavy geometric convergences that are unintended. And what I mean by that is the closer that you put geometry together with sub D, the more of a chance sub D is gonna interpolate that as a crease. So if you don't intend to have your geometry close together for sub D, then I would probably not have your geometry close together. In fact, I've been experimenting with some different ways of approaching things to try to get these points across to people because I definitely want people to be able to accomplish whatever forms they set their heart to. I'm having to cheat and use a little Alt S because of this lump. Uh, and we can get rid of that lump like nothing. Uh, just using hard ops. If we hover over smooth, we can see that um, just clicking it will put a smooth modifier, which is you know level one. And then there's a, you know, control clicking, which is level two. But let me tell you about level three. When you shift click this thing, it will create a vertex group, eliminating the outside perimeter and anything that's marked sharp. And what this means is that when I roll it, it only rolls the geometry, it only smooths the geometry that's inside of the border perimeter. And, and this means that when I smooth things, I don't eliminate stuff. So. This is kind of one of those uh, preview tools of uh, kind of what 
I've been pondering for when it comes to sub D and like smoothing geometry and stuff is, you know, like controlling the border because I've already rolled this in about seven iterations at 0.5 and we can click and leave that. And this is what we're looking at. So I'm just rolling the camera across just in the viewport. You know, I could be a complete surfacing nut and put the car paint on it and just talk about how things flow with the car paint. But we, we're still using like hardened edges. So this isn't a moment for like a victory lap. We're just talking about surface control. And so what we can do is get out of the uh, Mac cap. We'll just go back to the general one. I don't, I don't remember which one it was. We can't even reset it to default value. doesn't matter. We'll just find our chicken dinner for today. Here we go. It'll be this Mac cap. And even with this, I still don't like how the geometry is being treated. If we look at the wireframe, and so me personally, I am a fan of babying this thing all the way through. I mean, we have two levels of sub D. We don't even need two levels. We need to talk about one level and, and talk about, you know, really green lighting this thing all the way to success. So first thing is we'll remove the smooth. We can come back to that later. I, I want to deal with the, the classic lumps. And also if we turn the sub div off and on, we can kind of see, We can see uh, what the result is also. I need to also not have windows up while I'm working because I'm just too easily distracted. Like a kid in the candy shop, also surrounded by monitors with information. So this is already looking a little better. Uh, me personally, I kind of wish you wouldn't have had this inset thing done. It, I mean, it's okay. It gave us all these little handles to control as if this were a curve. I mean, we grab this and just quickly mark it. I mean, in my case, I have all of them on. I always have all of them on. It's kind of how I roll. I mean, if I need to unmark one, I'll just do it. I just think about how often I need to do it versus the amount of keystrokes it is and how many I save. And you know, that's how um, such decisions come to be. So continuing on, uh, we're looking at this with sub D on and off. And what I want to do is actually apply one level of subdivision and immediately dissolve one of these edges created from the boundary loop. And then the next thing I want to do is um, select everything and just unmark all because there's no need for any of those markings. Even though things got a little, um, I was about to make a reference to um, the King of the Hill episode about testicular torsion, but that's, that's kind of what we created in this area. And we can really just reimagine this real quick, like a uh, nightmare. And let's actually play with shrink wrap i am going to just duplicate this separate it and let's see we will select this and then select this press q and we will choose uh, shrink to and shrink to will actually shrink the mesh to this area except we don't actually want to shrink it yet so we want to create a uh, empty vertex group but we, you know, I should have a thing to do that, right? Just make it empty V group. But I'm, I'm kind of experimenting on the fly here, just thinking out loud. And so now we have this uh, V group, which I'll just set this to be wire. I don't want any weirdness. And we can, we can just leave it be. And let's talk about rewriting this area because, you know, um, we could just let it be. We could just ignore what I'm showing you here, but you know, building character is what I felt you were doing in this model, which is why we're even having this discussion. I felt that you were giving it 110% and I can respect that. I remember my days when I was really hitting these polygons for like 18 hours a day yesterday because there's always room to improve, of course. There is no um, level master, you know, I guess my name's a conundrum more of a, a squall or a squire from squire Xeon. you know I'm, I'm only showing y'all just the techniques i've learned from greater lords you know so we'll just redraw this area and we could do a couple of things here i'm going to actually opt to connect this here i mean like i said i'm just really freestyling this i didn't do a rehearsal for this or anything you are watching the rehearsal the rehearsals going live guys because you know um, I feel like also as a showman 
there's a need to um, be able to model on demand and on the fly sometimes. You gotta be able to get in there and just activate Showtime, like a special ability. So we look at this, and this is some ideal topology for this corner. However, we do start running into some convergence issues here. We could solve it in some very lazy ways. One way is to give a loop here, connect it here, and to solve that. So in a way, we're almost rewriting what we had to begin with, except, you know, I'm just thinking differently on it this time. We'll put a diamond quad just right here because it won't matter. However, there's a rather large pole there. And something about large poles and transitional areas, I just try to avoid it. So let's try to solve this an alternative way. We press F2, you know, this is the face that it gives us. So we could get creative, we could, you know, sometimes I experiment, I'll control shift B and just bevel a vertex and bring that in. But really the only way that we're gonna be able to solve this is to create one more edge and merge these two, which brings us to a hard decision about this place. So, uh, you know, one of the reasons I love GG is because we can just use it to slide things out, and make room for our mistakes. Because in the end, you know, maybe the original Geo was right. Maybe I can't change, but, and also I still have that pull near the convergence point. I think it's because there's a redirect and then there's just two different flows being created. But we'll hope that that doesn't come back to haunt us, but I can be a little picky about geometry sometimes. Also, we can see that because we didn't solve this area prior to applying the sub D, Blender just solved it as it wanted to which means it just put a diamond quad there. But if we look at this, this shape is, I would say much more controlled. Uh, in fact, we'll call this drone ball demo one, just power save that baby. And let's bring up the other hops and we'll just kind of bring up the original real quick and just talk about it. And I plan to talk about, you know, all the pieces in this thing. Um, it's probably gonna do it in a three hours spectacular here just like I'm doing now um, but this is what we were looking at initially and this is what we're looking at now so even with manually applying sub D I feel I was able to get a slightly cleaner topological result by just kind of thinking some things out and so I wanted to show you in terms of uh, what it'd be like if I were correcting your geometry if I were you know I always think about these things and talk about them with people internally, I'm like, is there any way I could automate myself? You know, like the mesh correction choices I make, you know, everybody's always talking about AI, like, you know, who's this AI based on? I'm not saying I'd be a good AI. I mean, I might be a good AI for some um, topology, just saying. I'd get that form done, just saying, just saying. So, we're just sliding some things around to relax. I mean, I almost feel like Blender should have a Yoshi touch and go relax tool. I also want to do a video at some point about how grab brush is like the king of modeling tools. Just the, the sculpt brush grab. It's just so insane. We'll dissolve that edge, it's not needed. This edge almost isn't needed, but we'll let it live. And we can actually slide these into the neighborhood and it's almost as if we didn't, um, you know, flash clear that neighborhood out overnight. So this area is a bit of a uh, questionable area, but to solve it, we will just draw one knife to rule them all. It's like, actually, where did, okay, for a second, I thought I created an additional entire other edge. But once we select those and turn them into a quad, we start to have a uh, better flow going on here. Of course, we can slide things around, get things uh, just kind of straight. I mean, these things are really based on your own personal preferences. So when I looked at your model, I was like, this guy has some potential, let me tell you. So despite all these corrections, it's only because I could see you doing this, like basically after I show you this, you'll, you may be like, I got it. And then you'll be surpassing me. There's nothing wrong with that. All right. So if we press Alt V and turn off wireframe, we can kind of see what we got here. And you know, it's gonna look pretty much the same because we took off the smooth. But if we go back and we um, add the smooth again with the shift click, 
and we just roll it up about 20 iterations like Mad Men and just see kind of what we're getting here as we move the mouse in and out, we move the mouse two in, we get vertex showers. Nobody wants that, which means I got too many iterations and I got too much factor happening. I mean, kind of out of control with these smooth mods, but something about them, I just love using them. In fact, if we jump this back to old Matty, Matty Car Paint, Matty Matt Cap, we turn smooth off, you can see a lump there and we've just basically resolved it topologically. So, I mean, I'm always trying to solve things topologically because, you know, in the end, these things are Boolean sacrifices, which I feel is the thing that makes people like my, my personal work, I, I, or at least I hope. Otherwise, I'm frightfully wrong and people hate my personal work. I don't know. Anyways, uh, the, also, it's important to not worry about such things. Just, just be, you know, I always tell people, I'm like, you know, don't worry about my approval or anyone's approval you're an artist your goal is to execute your vision bro um just be and you know everything you like assimilate make into yourself don't do that to me though i mean no, i'm kidding you can assimilate me but i'm also a series of assimilations as well like i always tell people that my shape language is pretty much based heavily on tony leonard who is a guy who's um Art I've admired for quite a while. I'm a close friend with him, and yeah, I enjoy his uh, his style of work. He he likes putting uh, impossible shapes on paper, and I've always interpreted that as um, kind of a modeling challenge. I don't know. So we uh, turn on solidify, and we're looking good. Now this is what a good solidify is going to look like. I mean, it could look better with the auto smooth. So we will shift click sharpen and just. Bam, set that auto smooth, and we accidentally enable our last two modifiers. We don't need shrink wrap anymore because we have basically eradicated that. So another thing is I'm in a permanent battle against fastening. At this point in time, we can put another sub D on it, but we probably want to put it before to solidify, unless we intentionally want this rounded look and we want our arcs to be dealt with again. But if we put a sub D on it, it's going to require that we go in increase these things because it's not modeled for sub d geometry it's modeled really for setting this thing up to be further detailed which means to get this geometry finalized with sub d the detailing process is a lot different i mean it, it, it's going to require subsequent geometry to make it denser and denser uh in order to get the detail you want where you need it you know citation need i'm sure someone can find an example of that not being the case but just in my experience, but you know, we have to go in and we crease everything again. And I don't actually want to do that. In fact, I applied one level of sub D because I'm just really stepping this up. I'm trying to keep it in that mid poly range. And I really just hate seeing sub D turn all of my hard earned creases into arcs. It drives me insane, just saying. So we turn on bevel next. And bevels just bevel. I mean, in this case, we got kind of a uh, generic bevel. Let's turn on bevel, press one, set it to auto smooth defaults, basically. And this is our form. So we can, you know, look at this, um, you know, like I said, we look at it in the old Matty car paint, you know, people are always commenting on me to look at stuff in this. Um, I, I do look at this when it comes to time, times of scrutiny, but when it comes to the render, if you could make it, if you can make it, the render will take it and this is the other side the other side is just us trying these same things just without any level of control and you know for me i'm all about the control i gotta control the result i gotta get a result that fails because i did it i fell that's why it failed and we'll sharpen the edges just to give it a little extra oomph on the on the creasing there but you kind of get the idea of how you would uh, go about using these particular modifiers. And so we come out and we look at this and this form's already looking better. In fact, we may just keep the uh, other half just to uh, be a comparison. And, you know, I'm already at the 30 minute mark. I could end this video smoothly, be in and out like a crack house, be back on the couch, staring at the lake, just looking out the window, sadly, while support issues for Actually, I'm not wearing my watch anymore. I'm free, I'm free. You guys don't get it. Every message I ever receive comes to my watch. So when you write me something stupid, I'm just like, thanks for that notification. 
I was eating a cheese. I was about to try to shovel a cheeseburger into my mouth. Just kidding. I must remain thankful. So we look at this shape, and the first thing I'm going to do is just separate the other half. I thank you for making it possible for this by providing this mesh. It takes a lot to send someone their mesh. Some people get kind of, in fact, we'll just hide that. Uh, some people get precious with their meshes, but in terms of people helping other people, I definitely enjoy seeing people share their meshes amongst each other. Um, and, and especially with me, because you know I only aim to help improve you and also study you and study how we can improve to help improve you. Because I mean, this shape is just sentence stopping. I, you know, I, I wanted to talk about this one before I ended the video because, you know, once again, you did the old inset, right? You're like, protect the perimeter, you know, because protecting the perimeter is important when it comes to using sub D. And we look at your mod stack order and we got just solidify bevel sub D. And those mods in that order tells me that this is a man who um, might not have, might have just at the end was like, you know what, I just need to make this look good. I'm just trying to get to the render, you know, my wife's calling me or something, I don't know. But if you're trying to do that, bro, then go under modifier, just hit smooth and just roll smooth a couple of times. It's gonna be hard to smooth while you have it on top of the sub D because of the additional geometry added. But if we shift scroll, move it up one, we can see that we're really getting somewhere. And this'll, this'll get us part of the way, except your geometry is just not smoothable. And so we could try using the old um, shift click trick, right? The one that we were just talking about where we shift click and we're actually smoothing only the inside while keeping your perimeter because I find it important to use this, keeping the perimeter, I, I'm telling you, there's a whole video about this thing that I'll make someday about how I use this and basically all my smoothing work to just kind of hack my smoothing. And you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but it you know, works a little more often than it should. Just saying. So, but your mesh, this flow, you already know. You already know. Paint dripping off the dough. Geometry just terrible. So, you know, if you're showing your mods in edit mode, I don't know, bro. I just don't know. Can't be showing the mods in edit mode. It's, it's, it's a lie. In edit mode, you're editing the, I don't know, this is just my, political opinion on it, right? You're in edit mode, you're editing the mesh. You want to see the God honest truth. You want to know that the vert that you're moving is truly moving to the position that you're moving it to, or else what are you looking at? So let's just talk about cleaning this up. So the easiest way is to just, you know, I never even got back to the shrink wrap trip trick I talked about. And that's because, um, I, I don't know. I, I sometimes, um, it's just not needed. Um, I can just solve it so fast and so rapidly on autopilot that I just forget to uh, follow up on certain tricks. I was about to shrink wrap this one to an earlier version of itself, but you know, I think we can bluff our way to success. You know, maybe even pop a little alt S in here because you know, the inmates are running the asylum with this topology. So we'll press M merge to last. Merge to last, and we'll slide this here, and we'll press M, merge to last, and we're just creating our our flow, our first legitimate flow. I mean, these other flows, they're not flowing, bro. Um, but we can, we can, we can ease their ease their concerns, and get them flowing just right. But the thing is, is when you have all this geometry, that's um coming in from different directions so um stepped it, it just you're going to create like um these situations where it just everything has to end at a try and you know there's a better way in fact let's duplicate this and let's turn this to a wireframe Jeez, get the mods off of that one click this shift click this q mesh tools shrink two and shrink two will only show up if you have two meshes. So now we can get in here and really um, rewrite this like Full Metal Alchemist. In fact, if I were just, let's say I was just doing this right, like I wasn't on video and I was just uh, fixing this, like just for somebody, I would just press C, 
grab all of this and delete it all and just approach this as if I were doing a retopo job. So that means I would switch this to global. Geez, you were playing with the snapping too. <laughs> you did everything in your power to try to get through this model. Like I said, this guy put in the effort, let me tell you. I could just tell in his model, I was like, this guy, he's ready. He's ready to learn. Like, I mean, I feel like if you use Blender enough to struggle with it and and fail at it, then you're, you're definitely ready for a tool. Otherwise, um, it's a lot of uh, benefit without understanding the why. I think like, um, you know, hops and box cutter are, they, they look like magic, but they're really magic if you've done it a million times by hand and you've realized like, there's gotta be a better way. And also the vertex snapping settings that are on, something isn't working. There we go. So I guess it's the affecting move stuff. So I, I don't mess with these snap settings a lot. Also, this mesh is supposed to be a wire dag nabbit. So let's do that again. And every time I see these mods in object mode, I'm just like, you. So, I mean, I'm really uh, procedural when it comes to uh, stepping up my modifiers. I'm also uh, pretty deliberative when it comes to setting up my edge geometry. In fact, this thing, um, which there's a way to show it without showing it. In fact, that's how we show it without showing it. We hide it because we're going to be projecting to it later anyways, or attempting to, you know, shrink wrap can be so finicky, which is why I don't leave it in place for any period of time. I just use it as a in place modeling solution. And we're just uh, pressing F, just filling things, just having a chat, you know, nothing major. And we can just uh, terminate that early and something vibrated in my pocket. So let me reach in that and it's my phone and that's a notification. So we'll throw the phone aside. And like I said, and there's a beep. What's the beep? What's beeping? For it must be closed. What is beeping? I know it's, it probably sounds insane that I'm always struggling to get get Zen time, but I'm telling you, I spent a lot of my time listening to Final Fantasy soundtracks and just trying to just model, you know, and I find that that's where I hit my stride. You know, I'll be listening to some Cloister of Trials music because I'm a, a lunatic and uh, it'll just hit me. I'll be like, and, you know, just start placing the spheres, you know, it just gets it crazy and I mean, you know, that's why I probably sound like a, a jerk when I'm always telling people, you know, the only secret or anything to fast track or whatever is just practice, just practice. You give it the hours, the results will show. There's no doubt about it. That's why, um, you know, you can look at, and I'm just gonna just double the trouble here. And dang, even the watch is blinking its light at me when I threw it off my wrist. I kind of come up with a like a Faraday basket and just start putting all my equipment in it. Just it just mutes me from everything. Like I guarantee you, it's about to begin ringing, and then I'll get messages about, "Hey, you want a phone call?" It's like, uh, sure. But also, I'm trying to. I don't know. Maybe I need a special. Uh, beacon I put in the sky, a D and D, a D and D to end all. In fact, every time someone messages me, I just restart my quote unquote vacation, which never ends. I mean, my vacation from you guys is only a vacation to work on more hop stuff because that thing is a dream and I have such great ideas in store for you guys with it. But I do feel that, um, putting a freeze on things for a moment just to, um, Kind of give everyone on team a break was essential. I mean, everyone on team's incapable of breaking, but let's look at what our geometry is. We almost got what you created to begin with in a way. So let's um, not do that. Let's instead 
create some flows around here. And this area is definitely um, beginning to get confusing. So let's redraw that again, where we will just create this region and just bring it in, converging into a diamond quad up top. And for some reason that doesn't feel good either. I am pretty um, crazy about topology. Like I said, uh, it's like a puzzle game. And you know, if I, if I ever could find a gang of people who were just obsessed with topology, I would just I would just lurk that group and just take lessons away from from modeling. You know, there's like this 51 page polycount thread called "How You Model Dim Shapes," and it was the greatest thread I'd ever seen. I was glued to that page. In fact, I think I have like a zip file somewhere of the whole page archived or not the whole page, but at, at a point in time. So we look at things and we wonder, maybe we can create a flow going this direction, but we don't wanna go all the way to the to the wet west hemisphere. So we'll just put a point here, which will allow us to slide and kind of relax. Um, you know, the thing about me is I just hate point skewing and having skewed geometry. So I'm always thinking about how I can uh, further slide and relax things. So Topology is just one of those things, you know, if you get me started on, I'll talk about it forever, but I do hate just talking about it with individuals because I feel like it's um, just wasted words. You know, I feel like I've said some great words and they've just, they're like, oh, great. Thanks for that. I don't know how to use Blender. I'm like, oh my God, why did, why did I respond to this message? <laughs> like, um, it happened so often. I mean, you know, bless them for trying, I guess. So we'll select this point, press F and add another edge and just press F again for, you know, respects on this geo. We're respecting geo today, guys. Hashtag respect geo. Geo does so much for you. Hold your meshes together. It's like happy, happy Mother's Day, except happy Geo's Day. All right, so let's look at this. We can solve this really linearly, like so, and keep offsetting our problem and coming up with a solution that is pretty similar to where we started, or we can actually uh, start relieving some tension somehow. Um, there's a lot of images out there that kind of show the rules of topology. And I feel like everybody has those images saved and nobody actually follows them. Or maybe some people follow them, but I try to utilize all of them. Like even the, um, you know, especially the, the one with the diamond quad, that one's my favorite, uh, where they talk about converging points and simplifying them, which I feel could have been what was being employed by our uh, donor here earlier on in the model. I must also add that I'm grateful for him for providing this model in the first place. Uh, without it, I wouldn't even have the opportunity to talk about such a thing. I would have had to create such geometry from scratch. And for me, it would have been, um, would have been more difficult. This guy definitely um, is the real MVP. So how do we want to solve this? We can begin skewing things. We also have a degree of relaxation we can begin giving to the perimeter edge that can begin um, kind of equalizing the geometry a little bit because we're not needing it for its initial purpose anymore. Um, we're still just really thinking about this area because we have all these flows and they're, they're kind of nice, right? Like uh, we could solve that. We could put one point there and just solve this like so, and then solve this like so, creating just this situation, the fatal four-way. How could we solve this? Could we slide this here, skewing this, making the need to J lightning bolt here? These are decisions that, you know, when I'm modeling, I actually make these decisions kind of rapidly. I'm not saying I'm a a smart person or anything it's just it's, it's topology you can just rewrite it rewrite it undo it uh control z i always talk to people about um how you know you can use save files and as like a save state like um 
I don't know if you ever played ZSNES or anything back in the day or, or currently. We'll just fill that and then we'll fill that without any more rigmarole, which leaves us with just this area of contention. So let's see how we could solve this on the next episode of Blender Ball Z. You know, Goku and his friends, just kidding. You know, if I could talk about something off topic for a moment, the latest Dragon Ball Z comic was just terrible. They, they really need to just get with the point. Like, all, all, all anime is, is just a dank build up. Build up to just some guy get punched in the face and then realizing the error of his ways as he's getting crammed up in a bottle, probably. I'm telling you, he's like, I'll get you next time, sort of thing. So we got the biggest convergence ever right there. Just the biggest star, star piece. And I almost feel like it doesn't matter, except it, it's probably fine. Let's solve this one. We'll fill this with the face. And let's say we want to neutralize the geometry. We could just F, F. That's how easy it is to simplify and just end something. I mean, you can also do it with up to three. You can do it with multiples. I mean, there's a lot of rules to sub D that are different than uh, any other modifier that are worth taking into consideration. Like I always remind people that by applying one level of sub D, everything on a mesh is a quad. Everything ever on that mesh is a quad. You know, people are like, really? I'm like, you never notice. Once you put sub D, everything's a quad. Ingons are quads, quads are quads, triangles are quads. Man, the quads are more quads than ever. They're just out of control, I'm telling you. Uh, once you put a sub D on it, the quads are the happiest, you know, it's like coming home for them, like a homecoming party. In fact, we can select these, just simplify that, use a diamond quad formation to create kind of a redirect and just flow that differently for this. We can uh, offset this termination, which is, you know, when I use triangles, I look at triangles as a termination. I'm like, okay, I terminated there. You know, when I see a bunch of triangles, I'm like, oh, okay, that guy terminated. He terminated everything. I am the terminator. You know, just terminating everything. In fact, the previous version of the model, I, f I thought that's what you were doing was uh, terminating everything. So, you know, while these rules work good for, you know, sub D rules, they aren't so good for working on curvature. So we have our shape and every time I tap out of edit mode, I just shed a tear over this mod order. So I guess the first thing is we can turn on shrink wrap, see how shrink wrap does. So here's us shrink wrapping back to the original form and here's us not doing that. So this is how off I was in my corrections of the modeling. So I kind of kind of got a little concave there, but let's go ahead and just apply the shrink wrap because we don't have a lot of time for that. And let's turn on the modifier and talk about that. So this is what our subdivision is looking like. And so the first thing you're gonna see me do is get in and just hit these little creases on the corners to begin creasing things. And you know, none of this is revolutionary. I've been doing this forever. This is just one of the ways I like to um, prevent sub D from just eating my angles for lunch because it just breaks my heart. We can actually lower this down to two. Two is like, if sub D looks good at one, then go to two. If it doesn't look good at two, then you should probably just keep it on one and you should probably also uh, deal with that geometry. But notice that anytime I'm dealing with pool hints, sub D is nowhere around unless it's early on in the stack. Like I said, these are sacrifices for bullions. So continuing on, you know, we turn this off and on. This is what we're getting. You know, the reason I didn't like that inset loop is because, you know, you keep adding, it puts that convergence. We can actually control shift click sharpen to just resharp it, which should basically unmark all the sharpening and then recalculate it, which because it's a nicely smooth shape, there is none. A little C sharp, uh, S sharp joke for you. I can tell by your silence that I should just get back to modeling. So we will just um, turn on solidify. So now if we turn off the wire, we can actually see this without talking about topology and thinking about topology and just go back to thinking about the actual result because you know at the end of the day I want creased results I want a smooth thing and then you know if you have a nice perimeter then yeah of course you're gonna be able to fit a bevel in there I mean the bevel is not really catching it where it should which is probably because of the angle we could always just go under bevel and 
I call this petting the kitty, which is where you just hold alt and you just roll the wheel backwards until you catch those delicious angles that you're going for with the bevel. You know, sometimes you gotta, sometimes you can't pet the kitty too much or else it'll uh, not work out for you. This area is a point of uh, tension with the modifier and we could get in and solve that, but I see that this video is already nearing its um, late mark. So let's come out and take a look at what we have on side A versus side B. So while this isn't problematic, if you are using subdivision, you, you are gonna have to play by subdivision rules, which means that you cannot give subdivision garbage geometry because while it is going to turn it all into quads for you, you may not like the result and you may not like the flow and you may not like how it handles knots. I mean, we take a look at this corner over here and this is just so much geometry to get such an ugly result is what I saw when I looked at this. Versus over here, we have something that's a little bit more efficient, a little bit more flowing as far as how we would um, go about creating this shape and managing it to completion. In fact, um, you might be watching this video wondering, um, you know, how are you going to deal with the creasing? Well, let me tell you about mirror tools and its integration with hops. Uh, by using mirror tools with uh, hard hops, you have a quick little control shift tilde helper that will help you just kind of move geometry into place. And really it's all about the art of being subtle with this tool, because if you go too far, things can definitely get problematic, but in small cases, you can really use it to just nudge your result. So I'll press control shift tilde and we'll just give this five. And I'm just going to just kind of um, adjust our result. We can already see that things have been tipped a little too far. Like I said, it's, it's all about the subtlety. But we can use this to really get these things to fit together. And this particular artist was also smart enough to have a sphere underneath so that you don't have to deal with the plating absolutely, which is very smart. We'll select both of these and we'll set this to four. And we'll just right click and that's our result. So. We can of course get in here and just lower the solidify on the modifier. I'll hold shift and do it to get a gradual result. And this is side B and this is side A. So we'll go ahead and just save that as demo one. And more than likely I'll be coming back to revisit this. I actually wanted to do a video where I was talking about the actual intended modeling process for going about such a picture. But I also wanted to try to do some enrichment and, and uh, talk about you know ways to improve handling such topology. So we didn't even get in here and talk about this piece, but I, I can assume that based on this video, you could basically extrapolate what I would do to this. I would get the flow flowing in a organized fashion, clean it up as much as possible. I already can see that by having triangle convergence simplification, instead of just flat out solving this adequately, that that is why it's not going to work out for you with this thing whenever you put this up D. I mean, it almost does, but you're, you you don't want this design showing up in your final result in the form of uh, small little knots. So with that, I wrap up this video. I thank you guys for watching. I'm going to take a drink of water real quick. All right, uh, I'll go ahead and wrap up this video. I thank you guys for watching. I especially thank the donor of this for sending it to me. Um, like I said at the beginning, all I'm proposing are just corrections to assist you in getting better based on my own experiences. I'm by no means I'm trying to come off as an expert or a know-it-all on such topics. Um, and with that, thank you for watching.